بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة وسلام على سيد المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سبيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد رسبكتي بروبرز ألدز سيستي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Have you ever thought about the stories in the Quran? Look at the stories in the Quran. You have the story of Musa alayhi salatu salam and other anbiya alayhi salatu salam. They're not in generally in one place. Have you ever thought why Musa's story here? Why Musa's story there? Why Musa's story there? Why not just in one place finish? Khalas, you want to get all the story regarding Musa alayhi salatu salam in one place you got it there. Lut alayhi salatu salam, one place you got it there. Yaqub alayhi salatu salam, one place. Everything in one place. Why? What's the reason? Because see, the Quran is a book which uplifts a believer. It strengthens the iman of a believer. So, through a believer's life, you have your highs and your lows and your ups and your downs. And you need to recourse back to the book of Allah to give you strength. Similarly, in the life of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there would be highs and lows, times of defeat, times of victory, times of hope, times of an element of despair. And then Allah would remind the Messenger of Allah and the believers, Oh, finding it tough? Remember Musa, what happened with him and Fir'aun? You've got Quraysh. Remember? The time how Musa والسلام, had to deal with the Bani Israel. So this is why any time a believer has a difficulty in his life, he always has the Quran to go back to. And the Quran is always there to inspire a believer. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never place the stories in one place. He placed them in different, different places in the different times in the life of the Prophet And this is why brothers and sisters in times of despair, in times of difficulty, in every time, the Quran is always there for us. Like it was there for the Sahaba, it is there for us today. And this is why when you ever feel despondent in your life, you find difficulty in your life, always recourse to the book of Allah, because that's Allah speaking to you. That's Allah speaking to you. See, when you see what is happening today in Gaza, when you see what's happened before, sometimes you think, how long is this Ummah going to last for? You know, it looks like a time may come that they may just fall apart. Wallahi. You look into history and you will see that this is the Ummah which never dies. This Ummah always lives. It might have its highs and its lows and its ebbs and its flows, but this Ummah is there. When the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated from Makkah to Medina, and where did he take refuge in? He take, took refuge in a little cave. The Quraysh came behind him. They had an expert tracker to find. They came right up to the mouth of the cave. Right up to the mouth. Abu Bakr is looking up and he said, Messenger of Allah, one of them looked down at their feet. They will see us. Game over. The Messenger of Allah said, Ma dhannuka bi ithnayn Allah thalithumma. So Abu Bakr, what do you think about those two when Allah is their third? What do you think? Do you think anybody can do anything to those two who Allah is their third? Allah did not give them the tawfiq to go and look in the mouth of the cave. Although the track showed them right to the mouth of the cave. Because when Allah protects you, and remember, remember, Wallahi, remember, when Allah protects you, when Allah is on your side, nothing can harm you. Today, Biden, 
is going to appeal to the Congress for $74 billion for Israel and Ukraine. Normally they give $4 billion of military aid to Israel every single day, every single year. Now $74 billion of aid to who? To Israel and Ukraine. But when Allah is your third, your trillions will not help you. Wallahi, two trillion dollars was spent. Where? In Afghanistan. Two trillion dollars. You threw out the Afghanistan, uh, the, the Taliban, you spent two trillion dollars. After spending two trillion dollars, you left Afghanistan. The next day, the very same Taliban walked in. Makaru wa makar Allah wa Allah al khairu wa makirin. They plot and they plan and Allah plans. And Allah is the best of planners. So this Ummah will never ever go away. This Ummah never dies. We, we haven't been faithful to the Palestinians, but let me tell you, we've been far more faithful than others. 22% of Palestine was Christian when Israel was created. Now it's a few, few percent. But the Muslims are still there by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they believe. So if you look throughout history, every moment they think Muslims finished. The Muslims ain't finished. The Muslims are always there. You look at Badr, 300 Sahaba radiallahu anhu against a thousand. Sahaba had sticks, two horses, a few camels. And they were, they had weapons, they had horses, they had swords, they had everything. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهِ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ Allah assisted you at Badr. وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ has two meanings. That you were small in number, or that in the eyes of your enemies, you were the lean, you were nobodies. And Allah says, who has assisted you? Allah says, I assisted you. That after Uhud, what happened? After Uhud, 70 Sahaba passed away, martyred. Literally every single Sahabi was injured. There were a thousand of them. They said the Muslims will never ever stand again. The Muslims stood again because the Muslims don't go away. Because this is a relationship we have with Allah. We have a relationship with of Iman. Brothers understand. Allah put you on this earth for a reason. You have been placed on this earth for a reason. Your greatest goal is to, to worship Allah, to please Allah, to assist your brothers and sisters, to have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's your purpose. Allah makes it clear. Allah did not put you on this earth for any other purpose. Every other thing is a means to this. If you work, that work must be something which relates to your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ This is the purpose of every single believer. Then came Ahzab, Allahu Akbar. Abu Sufyan who was in charge of the army, the battle of the confederates, that all of them united against the Muslims. The Jews, the Mushrikeen, all of them march on Medina. You know what Abu Sufyan said? Final battle. After today, the Muslims will never ever stand. Done and dusted. The Muslims were 3,000, 2,000 true believers, 1,000 munafiqeen. The army was over 11,000. Can you imagine? They said this will be the final battle. The messenger, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told the Sahaba to dig a trench. And then the messenger of Allah told him when he broke the boulder, the rock that Allah would give you victory. And imagine this. This is today brothers, this is real. This is you and I today. Wallahi. The Sahaba on this side of the trench, the 11,000 on that side of the trench. 
They're looking at them. There's 2,000 true Muslims, 1,000 Manafiqeen. Now they're looking at the enemy with their eyes. They're seeing exactly the same thing. And then Allah draws a picture. He says, when the Munafiqeen looked at their enemy, they looked at their numbers, they looked at their power, they looked at their might. They said, إِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرْضًا مَا وَعْدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Allahu Akbar. When the Munafiqoon looked at the enemy and those who were sick in their heart, those who would waver, those Iman, people whose Iman was weak, they said, you know what Allah and His Rasul has promised us just now that we will be victorious. It's just a deception. Don't you believe Allah is the Khalik? Don't you believe Allah is the superpower? And then Allah says, when the believers with their two eyes looked at the very same thing, imagine this, they're looking at the very same thing. Allah says, وَلَمَّا رَاعَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ The believers, Allah says, when the believers looked at this very same thing, the 11,000 on the other side of the trench, they said, this is what Allah and our Rasul promised us. This is what Allah and Rasul promised us. And Allah and His Rasul has said, spoken the truth. So brothers, sisters, wallahi, yes, it hurts, but never become despondent because this is an ummah which never dies. This is an ummah which never dies. This is an ummah which revives itself throughout history. You will have your highs and your lows, that's natural. But trust in Allah. Make your connection with Allah. Don't just make dua when, when you're in times of desperation. Make dua all the time. Isn't Allah the do of everything? The Messenger of Allah in the Battle of Badr, he could have gone out and fought and increased the numbers of the Muslims. What did he do? Most of the time, he sat in the tent and he made dua to Allah. He made so much dua to Allah. He cried. He became unconscious. He cried so much. He said, Allah, handful of Muslims, they die, Islam finishes. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him Jibra'il coming. Have you watched? Have you been following what's been happening in Gaza? Have you heard them saying, say, Wallahi, it seems like Allah's Nusra is descending from the heavens. Have you seen the doctor when he smells that person, the shaheed? He says, Wallahi, I've never smelt a fragrance like this in my life. Have you seen them? They were saying that we're, we're mutma'in. That we are, we are confident that our hearts have solace in them. Why? Because when Allah gives you solace, nobody can defeat you, Wallahi. And you think this is something abstract? Didn't Allah mention the Sakina that he descended upon the heart of the Sahaba when they were scared? Allah said, I place Sakina upon their hearts. So much Sakina that they're standing in front of the enemy, they fall asleep. Because that's what comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not ever, wallahi, become despondent. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his time. And when that time is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the believers victory because Allah says that it's a right upon us that we help and give victory to the believers. But Allah has his time. Allah is Allah, we are the slave. You are not Allah. Allah does not have to listen to you and I. Allah has his time. Look after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. Imagine this. Let me draw this picture to you. If you've never heard it before, let me draw this picture. The Messenger of Allah has passed away. His body is in Masjid Nabwi, in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. It's groups of the Ubs and the Zabian, large tribes, are marching onto Medina to take Medina. 
The Ansar are saying that we're going to choose a leader from ourselves. Literally, literally, the entirety of those who have embraced Islam one way or the other have rebelled besides one place in Yemen, three places in the Hijaz, Taif, Makkah and Medina. That's it. Abu Bakr says, I will wage war with every single one. They came to him, Umar came to him, the Sahaba are scared. He said, you for real? We've got a rebellion, the Messenger of Allah has passed away. We've got people attacking Medina and you are saying you're going to wage war on everybody? Abu Bakr said, if I have to fight them all by myself, I will fight them all myself. He said, Ayyan Qusuddin wa ana hay. Can the deen be reduced which the Messenger of Allah bought? And Abu Bakr, his closest companion, is alive? Never. So imagine this, the world is against you. The world is against you. But one man changed the landscape of history. One man. Omar will say, if it wasn't for Abu Bakr, we would have been, we, we would have been destroyed. Anas radiallahu says, after the demise of the Prophet wasallam, we became like foxes. And then Abu Bakr turned us into lions again. So never become despondent upon what is happening around you because Allah has his prescribed time. The Messenger of Allah within his lifetime said to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, لَتُفْتَحَنَّ الْكُسْتُنْتُنِيَّةِ فَنِعْمَ الْأَمِيرُ أَمِيرُهَا وَنِعْمَ الْجَيْسِ ذَلِكُ الْجَيْسِ He told the Sahaba that you will surely conquer Constantinople. Their best Amir will be that Amir, and that will be the best of armies. So many of the Sahaba participated in battle to conquer it because they wanted be, to be those people. Abu Yubal Ansari is buried in Istantinople. He was over 80 years old. Allah has his time. When was it conquered? 800 years after the message of Allah said. 800 years when Khabab anhu, Bilal and all the other Sahaba came to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said, Oh Messenger of Allah, we can't take it anymore. Persecution is unbearable. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting, leaning against the Kaaba, he sat up and he said, you know those who came before you? It was an instant, it didn't happen right away. They would be placed the uh, ditch will be dug and they will be placed in that ditch and then they will be sawed in half. Their skins will be ripped from their body. He said, Inna kum jilun. said, you, imagine, he's telling Bilal. He's telling Khabab, he's telling Ammar. He's telling the most persecuted of the Sahaba. Rest, chill out, wait. Allah has his time. Don't worry, you are a group of people who haste. Don't haste because Allah has his time. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's time comes, then you will see the change. You think, you think Masjid al-Aqsa and Salahuddin was created out of a vacuum? No, do you actually believe that? Do you think Salahuddin just woke up one morning and said, look, I'm going to go and conquer uh, Islam, I'm going to go and conquer Masjid al-Aqsa? No, Nuruddin created Salahuddin. They say if it wasn't for Nuruddin, there would have been no Salahuddin. Nuruddin nurtured him. Nuruddin was Turk. Salahuddin was Kurdish. But they had one fikr, fikr of the Ummah. He created him. He nurtured him. Their mission was to conquer Masjid al-Aqsa, liberate the Muslims. Nuruddin had a pulpit created that the day that we conquer Masjid Al-Aqsa, the Imam will give khutbah on this pulpit. Nuruddin passed away. But that's it. That's what you call a legacy. He created Nur, he created Salahuddin. When Salahuddin conquered it, the first Jummah khutbah was done on the pulpit of Nuruddin Rahmatullah alayhim. So nothing is made in a vacuum. You want greatness of this Ummah? I'm telling you now. 
that you can create people, individuals, create children who have a connection with Allah. Create your tomorrow. Wallahi, I have a family member who's on jewelry service now. Listen to this. She's on jewelry service. She goes, I go there. Half the names for the court, the defendants, half of them are Muslim. You're not 50% of Birmingham. So it shows what you and I have created so far. We created garbage because me and you are garbage. We have no creating no future for our ummah. No akhlaq, no manners, no connection with Allah, no concern, just a bunch of rude boys. And, th and that, that's the reality. So brothers, listen, do not become despondent of what you see on your media. Wallahi, let me tell you something. I am telling you Allah is with the people of Gaza. I've been to Gaza. You know what these people have been through for 16 years? They're bricks, they're solid. Allah chooses a group of people for a period of time. Allah gives them the himma. He gives them the, the power. But let me ask you, what are you and I going to do now? What can we do? What assistance can we give? Listen, firstly, make dua, solid dua to Allah, that you trust that Allah is the Malik. The one that is giving them sukoon and peacefulness where they are now. See, you compare nothing. I'm telling you straight. We live in the dunya and we get attached to the dunya. The Prophet Sallallahu said, when will the Ummah become weak? He said, Kirahiyatul Maut. Hubbud dunya wa Kirahiyatul Maut. That they will love the dunya and if, if you love the dunya, you don't want to leave it. So he said, Kirahiyatul Maut. He said, and they will dislike death. But let me tell you, Wallahi, the martyrs in Gaza, half of them children, 2,000 so far, are all people who are going to Jannah. Jannah, Shuhada, the rest of them, the other 2,000, Shuhada, defending their lands, that's jihad in itself. Dying oppressed, that's jihad in itself. You can't compare, as Umar said on the Battle of Uhud to Abu Sufyan, he said, yeah, am I are dead, but you comparing your dead with our dead? Your dead are in Jahannam, our dead are in Jannah. What you comparing it with? Victory. So brothers, what can you and I do? We nurture our children, wallahi, we nurture our children. Tomorrow, invest in your children. Make them strong believers. Make them to your legacy. Make them your Salahuddin. Make them your Imam. Make them somebody who will be your Sadqa Jariya. And for that, you have to spend some time. You have to have a focus. Give up a bit of the dunya for your akhirah, brothers and sisters. Bombs are falling on people, they're gone. Little children are gone. Also, what else can you do? Listen, my question to you is, what are you doing? Ask yourself, what have you done? Everybody, I believe, I believe everybody here is concerned, 100%. Everybody is concerned. But does your action surpass your fikr? Or is it just fikr? Because your action should surpass your fikr. If you are sitting there worried, if you are concerned, then your action must be more than your worry. Because that's what our believers are like. People are those who believe or do good actions. So now you have this group of people, okay. Oh, protest. Oh, what good are protests? We had a million people for Iraq. Habibi, are you doing something more than that? If you're not there, keep your cake out shut to do something. You're making other people despondent. You know, let me say, you know, people in Gaza, people in Palestine, they're not connected with anybody. They don't have the outside world. No thing goes in, nothing goes out with the express permission of the the, the Israel. But what they do see is a million people marching for them, their brothers and sisters in London. And they say, okay, we're not alone. They see this. Ask any brother who's been there. They see it in America. They see it in, in, in Morocco, which is normalizing relationships. And it gives them hope. 
then the world is with us. And let me tell you, wallah, the world is with the Palestinians. Allah is with the Haq. So don't make me, don't make excuses. You do nothing and you put other people out. Make other people despondent. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, Man qala halak al-nas fa ahlakahum. Whoever says, the people have been destroyed. He's the one who's destroyed them. You know what that means? The one who says the people are doing something, are you wasting your time? Don't, it's not worth it. The Messenger of Allah said, he's the one who's destroyed the people because he's created despondency. So, we have a protest tomorrow in London. We have a coach going from Sufa. Brothers, please, please register. Go if you're taking your own car. Go. Show the Palestinians that the people of the UK are with them. They will see the images. They will see you and I. And I say it to you again. Your actions must surpass your fikr. Also, listen, long term, long term. Even now, but long term. We need to up our game. And I mentioned two things. I don't have time. There's a few other things I would like to mention. But two things. Contact your MPs. Contact your councillors. Why do you think Sunak and these people buy into this? Because you have the Zionist lobby. Why do you think Biden and these people? Because they grew up with the Zionist lobby. We do nothing. We don't speak to anybody. Yeah, on the uh, Bekar council, a rubbish council, a rubbish MP. Have you ever asked the MP? Have you ever gone up to the, your local council and say, okay, star, your Labour, Starmer said this against international law. What do you say as a Muslim? I gave you my votes. He feels no heat. You see anybody speak about Israel, wallahi, the, the Zionist lobby, come on him like a ton of bricks. All my life I've been speaking about Iraq, Afghanistan, nothing ever happened to me. The day I started speaking about Israel, bang, you should have seen, you know, all the media outlets. But why, are you the Abu Bakr of this Ummah? Or are you the fox of this Ummah? So, go to your MPs, speak to them. And, and thirdly, listen, you know, let me tell you straight. You know, I've been giving these talks for many years, everybody knows. Nobody ever comes to you and say, Jazakallah Sheikh, Jazakallah Khairan, you've spoken the truth for us, you know, you give us him and nobody. And I don't want you to come to me, I don't care. But what I'm telling you is, you know, when you see somebody doing something positive, an MP, a councillor, go and thank him. Slowly, because the others would condemn him, you don't even thank that person. When you go past, listen, when you go past a statement, and it's a positive statement on your social media. Put a positive comment there. Because that's how algorithms work. That's what, what you see. What do you think you see what you see? Because you watch that. So if you engage, then it, it's sent to yourself and people like you. Now, you may think, you may think this means nothing. That's, I'll tell you why you think nothing. Because you've never been involved, many are. have never been involved in any advocacy. So for, for and, I, and I believe, wallahi, I believe everybody here is bleeding for Gaza. I believe that. But you can't just bleed and do nothing. Allah expects you to do something, at least within the sphere of your capacity. Allah doesn't expect you now to liberate. Allah expects you to do something where you're here. What you're doing, so guys, Long term, long term, one life. And yet one final thing, one final thing. I say this as an advocate of a madarsa, of a masjid. Some of your money now needs to go to those organizations which defend the Muslim corner. If you want to live in this country, you need to spend some money over there. With all these organizations, there's plenty of them. Now you need to pump that money, not in a minaret, Minarets never gave anybody guidance and defended anybody in people who will defend your corner. Zakumullah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate our brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our shuhada, jannat al firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate Masjid Aqsa. May Allah give victory to the Palestinians. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us 
you and I, to create men like Salahuddin who had a concern for the Ummah. May Allah keep us united in the reunited Jannah.